is up guys? So Hills Kids, it's June, it's week one, two, and a three. Yeah, that's right, we are on week three of So Hills Kids. We're in June, we're talking about confidence, we're talking about some more next month. It's gonna be fuck wild, guys. But we are here today and I'm so excited that you guys decided to join us on this Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday that you decided to watch this video. I'm glad that you guys are taking time out of your day, and I hope it's something worth it for you guys. So today we've got a ton of things to jump into. Before we do, we gotta get ready. So we're gonna jump into our game, and I will see you guys after that. Let's go! Father's Day to all of you dads out there. If you are watching, I hope you guys did well on how well you know your dad. Okay, guys? Come on. You should know these things. Anyways, I hope you guys did good. And, well, let's jump into today's story, okay? So today's story is another one that's really popular, and you might have heard it before in Sunday school or in class or here at Southern Hills. But here's the thing. This one is crazy and shows a ton about confidence. You see, we're going all the way back to this time in Judges, okay? So, not the best time, but we got a lot of cool stories from this time that really show how God works, okay? So, for this one, we're going to be talking about a huge underdog story, and you're thinking, David and Goliath? No, there's another one, and this one was intentional. You see, they could have come at the Philistines, the bad guys, with a ton of people, but God whittled it down to just a few, okay? So if you're interested in this story, we're going to dive in. There's going to be cheese balls. There's going to be craziness going on. And we'll see what happens, okay? First, we've got a verse from Haley. You guys take a minute and learn this verse with Haley, and we're going to jump into the full story. I'll see you guys there. Hey, guys, it's Haley, and I am back for the month of June with a brand new memory verse. So this month, we're going to be in Psalms 27, 13. So let's go ahead and start our brand new words and motions. So... First part is, I will remain confident of this. So, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a fist and slap it on onto our palm. So we're remaining, I remain confident, you're very confident with your hands on your hips, of this. And we're just gonna nod our head. So it's, I remain confident of this. All right, that's our first part. Our second part is, I will see, we're gonna put our little binoculars on. So I will see, the goodness of the Lord. Make real big thumbs up so I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So make real big arm motions because we are in the land of the living. So second part is 
I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 27, 13. Great job, you guys. Bye. All right, guys, so today we're going to jump into the lesson. Now, if you didn't guess who it was earlier, we're talking about Gideon. Gideon was one of the judges that came in the time of Israel where the judges were set up by God to help deliver Israel. Because you see, Israel kind of had a bad day. They didn't have, they weren't obeying, they, they, they were having a hard time, people weren't invading them. It was a mess, okay? Israelites were everywhere. And so God would periodically send judges to both redeem Israel and bring them back to God. And so we have this judge named Gideon. Now, Gideon sounds like a powerful name, right? You think, like, Gideon, right? Yeah, Gideon. But the reality is, he was actually really low on the totem pole. In fact, he says that he is the lowest person in the lowest family in the lowest tribe of the whole kingdom. He thinks he is the bottom of the totem pole, but God uses him, okay? So Gideon's here, and the Israelites have been invaded. They have been invaded by some pretty terrible people who are raiding them, taking their food, and it's just not a good sign. But here we go. Gideon, jumping in right here. We're going to be in Judges chapter 6. We're starting in verse 12, okay, guys? So it says right here, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The mighty hero, the Lord, is with you. So Gideon's chilling one day. He's actually hiding in the bottom of this big old pit, trying to make some food, because the people who were invading them were so evil that they, if they saw food, they would take it from you. So he had it hidden. And so it's under there, and he says, I'm going to deliver you through Gideon. And Gideon's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You got this wrong. I don't know what you're talking about. You have got this wrong. But... God continues to say it, and eventually Gideon gives in, right? Moving to verse 14, the Lord, will, the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. So he's picked it. He's made up his mind. But Gideon is like, no, 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 no. There's no way. Verse 15, it says, But Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in the entire family. So like I said, Gideon thinks he's the bottom of the totem pole, okay? But the Lord still chose Gideon. He said, nope, you are the one that I choose, and you're going to go, okay? And so Gideon, after a lot of convincing and several signs from God, decides to do it. But here's the thing. God takes a kind of unconventional approach. So we're going to flip on over to chapter 7 for you guys. Um, and here we are, and it's Judges chapter 7, verse 2. We're going to start out and it says, the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. So, let's pretend we've got a nice jug of cheese balls here. If you guys can see, there's a lot of them. There's now one less cheese ball in here, but there's still a whole entire jug of them. That's a lot. And God says, Gideon, you got too many. And Gideon's like, what? I just, I just built this army, right? I just gathered all these people. And he says, God says, you have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they have saved themselves by their own strength. Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid, they may leave and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 to fight. So there were 32,000 people who were ready to fight. They said, okay, I'm going to go. And I'm going to fight. And you got to, that's too many. That's too many. So we're going to reduce the numbers, okay? We're going to take it down, and we're going to reduce the numbers. So anyone who's scared can go home, okay? So everybody leaves, right? And the numbers get reduced. All the rest leave. And so now we're stuck with this smaller army. Can you imagine what you would do if God sent home two-thirds of your army and you're just stuck there and you're like i guess i have to trust him but so he reduces his army again and gideon's like what and so the lord told gideon there are still too many bring them down to the spring and i will test them to determine who will go with you and jumping down to verse six it says only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others got on their knees and drank in their mouth in the stream. And the Lord told Gideon, 
With these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So we went from this to this. And now it's looking like we're going to have uh, this. And the rest go home. You see, God left him with this. This tiny little insignificant amount. Barely a drop in the bucket compared to the 32,000 people he initially had. God took almost all of Gideon's army, but Gideon chose to obey, guys. If you continue in the story, you see that Gideon not only defeats the enemies, but he drives them out victorious and not at his own hand, at the hand of God. So we're going to worship and praise and sing about the goodness of God, and then we're going to jump into the next little bit. So let's Sing, and then I'll be right back with you guys. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you have always been enough. Though the night may get dark. Though the waiting seems long You have always been faithful To remind me of your love You are good In the morning I see you are good In the evening I see you are good You are good to me You have always been patient You have always been kind You're consistent through the ages Oh, what a friend of mine So I remind my soul to bless you Standing firm upon your truth Knowing you cannot be shaken Cause I've seen what you can do Oh, you are good morning I'll see you are good in the evening I'll see you are good you are good to me you are good in the morning I'll see you Keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, keep on getting better, you 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 keep on getting better. You keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, you keep on getting better, you are good in the morning I'll see you. I'll see you. Uh, good. In the morning, I'll see you. Uh, 
see you are good in the evening I hope see you are good you are good to me you see here's the thing guys God can use anyone we're talking about confidence we're, we're talking about seeing ourselves how God sees us this month and that is it you see, Gideon saw himself as the lowest, the lowest person in the lowest family and the lowest tribe in Israel. He thought he was nothing, but God saw through that. God sees you as so much more than you can even imagine. He sees what you're capable of, and he sees what you can do, and he wants to use you guys, just like he used Gideon. Gideon didn't think he would amount to anything, but God used him. And God can use you in every single day in so many different ways. Gideon didn't think he was going to be an army commander. He was in a hole stomping on some wheat before God called him. So what can you do, guys? This week we have a challenge for you guys. I want you to think about this question. How could God use you? What gifts, what talents, what things has God gifted you with that will allow you to grow God's kingdom, to spread God's word, and to live for him. You see, Gideon wasn't sure. Gideon wasn't confident. But when he finally trusted in God, and when he believes that God would take care of him, he grew so much. And he defeated the enemies of Israel. He drove them out. Israel was saved all because Gideon trusted. Because Gideon had confidence that God knew what he was doing. So you guys remember that. God knows what he's doing. And if he calls you to do something, even if it's scary, or strange, or unfamiliar, he will have your back, guys. Do not forget that. That's it for this lesson. I'm going to see you guys next week for our last video in June. I cannot wait. I will see y'all there. Later.